So you've done your research, maybe you've watched a bunch of my videos, and you've decided that Shaker Heights is the town for you. Well, in this video, I'm going to give you 10 reasons that it just might not be the spot that you are hoping for. Hi guys, I'm Patty, Patty sells CLE. Welcome back to my channel, Living in Cleveland, where I make videos about all things Northeast, Northwest, and even down South of Ohio and Cleveland. Um, you know the drill. If you don't want to miss any of my videos, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, leave me some comments. I love them. I respond to them. Um, so it's January 2023. I took a couple of weeks off for the holidays. Hope you had a great holiday. And it's January. Back to business. Here I am making my first video of the year. And today, and I don't know why. Well, I do know why. I started with Shaker Heights. I've done a Shaker Heights video before just a year ago, um, but for some reason I decided that I should make another one. Um, so I'm gonna give you 10 reasons why Shaker Heights may not be the spot that you are hoping for. Now, Shaker Heights has gotten some publicity over the last few years. Um, Reese Witherspoon and Kerry Washington ha were in a like a mini series called Little Fires Everywhere. It's based on a book um, written by a Shaker Heights native and was on HBO, I think, it was really good, um, but it takes place in Shaker Heights. Um, some famous people are from Shaker Heights, Paul Newman, Machine Gun Kelly. So it's kind of on the map um, and it's famous for some several different reasons. And let me just tell you, I'm a little obsessed with Shaker Heights. The housing is gorgeous driving around the town. It's just absolutely beautiful. Um, so I'm going to give you the reason why I'm making this video. My cousin recently moved back to the Ohio area and moved to Shaker Heights. She was living in Portland, Oregon, and we've been spending some time out there. And my daughter was just out there babysitting um, my little cousins and recently spent four days watching their dog. So we went out on Monday and um, I'm also in the process of selling a home to a lovely couple from Florida who found me on this channel and I needed to do some work out there. So I decided, hey, I've been spending some time out there for various reasons. Let's make another video about Shaker Heights. So let's talk about some reasons. We all know why Shaker is, you drive through and you're like, oh my God, this is beautiful. These homes are gorgeous. Um, so let's just talk about some reasons, some downsides of Shaker Heights. And the first one is accessibility. It's not like on the west side where you can take I-90 or even down south, you get off 71 and you turn left and boom, there you are. Like where I live, you get off 90 turns into Route 2 where you're, as you're going west. You get off Oak Point Road, take a right, take a left, you're at my house. I'm, you can hear, it, I'm right there off the highway. Most western suburbs, you are less than five minutes to a major highway. Not so much on the east side. Shaker Heights, if you're coming from the west side, you got to take 90 east and then you got to hop on this opportunity corridor. I'm going to show you some video up above, well, we're just right here, of what it's like to drive through this opportunity corridor, which is a new um, project, is a new part of the highway, just to try and make it a little more accessible. But what it does is it really just dumps you off, um, like right after East 55th Street and right onto Buckeye Road, and I have some video of Buckeye Road, and it's not the best neighborhood. It's part of Cleveland, it is not Shaker Heights. So you have to drive through some iffy neighborhoods, you know, I hate to say it and be blunt, but that's just the way it is. And every person, I just got off the phone not a half an hour ago um, from somebody who found me on YouTube, she's local. And uh, we were talking about Shaker Heights and the first thing she said was like, oh, there's just no way to get, good way to get there. So you do have to drive through some um, not so nice neighborhoods. In fact, last year I was selling a house out that way and I had to go to the restroom so bad and I was already past Shaker Square on Buckeye. And yeah, I just, you know, it was daytime, so I felt it was fine, but you know, you do have to go through some sketchy areas. So number one is accessibility. It's just not easy to get there. I mean, it's easy. It's just, you have to drive through some so-so neighborhoods, so that's it. So number two, let's just get right to it, the cost of living. Um, and most of my clients that find me on YouTube, they're like, oh my gosh, I, you know, I just talked to somebody yesterday from San Diego, like I can't afford San Diego anymore. Cleveland is affordable. Okay, and it is, overall, Cleveland is very affordable. Shaker Heights, um, their cost of living is actually 4% higher than the national average. 
the housing is actually 11% higher than the national average. Um, is it um, more expensive than Portland, Oregon? No. San Diego? No. It is not. Um, so let me show you some houses. We, I had the, mm, I loved it. And this is probably why I'm obsessed. We went through a few empty homes the other day um, and I was able to film some. So right now I'm gonna show you a house that is currently for sale. It's $495,000. Um, as you see, the it's beautiful. It's completely redone. For some reason, they didn't redo finish the flooring, all hardwood floors, um, but they are giving a ten thousand dollar allowance on it. Um, but you'll see how the it's a brick home, and that's what you see in Shaker is these beautiful brick Tudors, brick Colonials, um, and what in one commonality that these homes have. Most of them have these third floor. Um, like two bedrooms with a full bath and with these clawfoot tubs. Absolutely beautiful. So this particular house, you'll see, I mean, the kitchens are beautiful. I just, if you love old homes, you are going to love Shaker Heights because there's so many old homes. That being said, there's a lot of homes for sale in Shaker Heights and there's a lot of empty homes and there's a lot of homes that have not been brought back to their grandeur like this one you're looking at right now. Um, so in fact, you're going to see down an, a couple more houses down. There's one, it just got picked up because it's, it was 189. In fact, I'm going to go to this one next. This house is 189,000. It just went pending this week. Today's Thursday. We went and looked at this on Monday, um, but it's livable, but you can see it hasn't been updated like the one that's 495 with the beautiful kitchen, with the quartz countertops, the tile showers, the, oh my gosh, the new light fixtures, unbelievable but this one is definitely it needs some work but it's still livable my daughter livable my daughter was with me and she's like this is the house for me I could live in it I could fix it up so you know so there is a range of expensive not so expensive 495 is really not that expensive for a house that was five bedrooms like almost 4,000 square feet um, this next house I'm going to show you is this was my dream house my husband and I fell in love with this house 389 $389,000. I think it still had four bedrooms. It had that finished attic with the full bath, finished basement. It had an outdoor area, the curb appeal, all brand new windows. Oh, another thing you're going to see in Shaker that you're not going to see in many other suburbs of Cleveland are these slate tile roofs. I don't, you don't see them at all on the west side. When you get a tile roof, there's like virtually maybe if some, if a tile falls off, replace the tile, but there's no maintenance. Um, in fact, the house. I am selling to my lovely couple in Florida. Um, they, um, oh, that's another thing. I Don't let me forget. I want to talk about this. The house they're purchasing has a slate roof, and we just had the inspection last week, and my inspector is like, oh, yeah, these are great. There's nothing to do with to them. It's great shape. Um, so as I'm talking about that house, um, I don't have a picture. If I can find a picture, I'll take a picture of what it is. It looks like the house they're buying it looks like just a normal brick beautiful colonial, but it's not. It is a multifamily. And that's the one thing about multifamilies in Shaker versus another city that has a lot of multifamilies is Lakewood. Um, and up here is a picture of what almost every multifamily, we call them doubles, what every double in Lakewood looks like versus Shaker Heights. Almost every multifamily or double looks like this. Big difference. Um, this particular one that my couple purchased, it's really cool because the first floor has a separate entrance to the basement and only part of the basement, well, it has the whole act, but it has its own private finished basement with a bar in there. It's so cool. And then the upstairs unit has its own access to the attic, which has two bedrooms and a full bath. So really cool up and down have different, you know, things that are unique to it. Um, so, and it's very affordable. This particular house was $230,000 and you get rent, so half for half of it. Um, okay, so um, a wide range of um, pricing on homes. Um, there's also new construction. There's lots of new townhomes going on. Um, those are probably gonna be in the five, $600,000 range. Another thing that um, Shaker is known for is like right on, um, is it Van Aken? Shaker Road goes to, oh my gosh, I'm losing. I think it's right on Van Aken. There's a bunch of these old apartments and condos. So there's lots of rentals. In fact, 29% of the population are renters in Shaker. So if that is a concern for you that you don't want to be in an area where there are a lot of renters, then Shaker might not be the area for you. 
Um, as we continue to talk about cost of living, let's talk about taxes. Property taxes, Shaker Heights is one of the top three taxes in all of Cuyahoga County. It's over 4%, um, which is probably part of the reason what keeps the house prices down so low. Because let me tell you, that house for four ninety five dollars on the west side would be a seven dollars $800,000 home. The taxes on that property are close to, gosh, I wish I would have looked it up, but probably close to $10,000 a year. So they're double than what you're gonna get on the west side. Um, so keep that in mind, your taxes. In fact, my cousin was telling me like, oh my gosh, yeah, we thought we had this great home. And then the taxes are so high that our mortgage is actually higher than what it was in Portland. So you've got to keep that in mind. So another thing is your income taxes. So you have your property tax, which is going to go into your mortgage payment, which is going to really add, you know, don't say, oh my gosh, 389, that's nothing. Well, you're going to probably want to add on another 800 to a thousand dollars a month to what your mortgage payment's going to be to, oh gosh, sorry, I keep knocking my over my light, um, to what your monthly payment's going to be. Now let's talk about income tax. In fact, my last video of 2022 was on Ohio income taxes. So Shaker Heights has an income tax rate of 2.25, so two and a quarter. Now, if you live in Shaker Heights and you work in Shaker Heights, you're gonna, your employer will take out Shaker Heights income taxes and you're fine. But if you work in Cleveland and you live in Shaker Heights, you're gonna be paying Cleveland taxes for your prop, for your income tax, and you're still gonna owe Shaker Heights their portion of their income tax. Now, they do give you a 50% credit. A lot of cities give you a 100% credit. And I think I mentioned in my last video, when I lived in North Olmstead, they gave 100% credit. It was so easy. I never paid city income taxes. I would fill it out. Here's what I made in Cleveland. Yep, I get 100% credit, never owed any money. I still have, I live now in the city of Lorraine. My envelope is still sitting down there. They're waiting for their money because I owe because they don't have a credit. So you really want to keep that in mind. What Shaker Heights does not have is the school income tax, which when I lived in Oberlin, I did not even know that existed. And that can be, Oberlin has a 2% school income tax on top of um, their property or their city income tax, but they do give 100% um, credit. So that's at least something. Okay, so cost of living, it is a little bit more expensive. Well, taxes, a lot more expensive. Okay, the third thing, maybe Shaker's not for you. If you don't like diversity, this is not the place for you. Shaker Heights is a planned community. Back in the late 60s, the community got together and they decided, that they embraced the whole diversity thing. They built this city to be diverse. In fact, in the 70s, they voluntarily um, started busing the students to, to create this diversity. Um, and so, and that's one thing that they, they really, it's one of the things that they're most proud of is their diversity. In fact, they have um, a division of equity and inclusion committee that meets and, and just to keep, make sure that, you know, this is their core mission of, of the whole city is to be diverse. Um, so if you're not a fan of diversity, you know, this isn't going to be the place for you. And again, if it is, this is the place for you because your next door neighbor, you know, could be white. It could be African-American. You could have age. You just don't know, but that's the beauty of it. But you know what else on the upside? Think about the restaurants you have. There's so much culture in Shaker Heights. I mean, you want to go to a Thai place? Hey, it's right down the street. Italian? That's over there. You know, you want soul food? We got that too. So lots of diversity, good or bad, that's up to you. So now let's talk about schools. Schools is always a big, big issue. Um, and if you go on niche.com, Niche gives all of Shaker Heights an absolute A. It's, they consider it the third best place in all of Ohio to live. And they give the schools an A. Now, when you go to the Ohio Department of Education, we're still reeling from the pandemic. We haven't had a report card since 2018. In 2018, the entire school system, all the schools, were given a C. Achievement got an F. Now, you know, if you've been watching my videos, I am a former public school teacher. I taught in Cleveland for almost 10 years, and then I went out west to Vermillion and taught in the cute little lake town. But when I was a Cleveland teacher, I mean, we had to deal with this all the time. 
it has, um, how do I want to say this? So it is a C. North Olmstead was a C. You have, because you have diversity, you have such a wide range of housing. You have million dollar homes. You have low income homes. You have everything in between. And unfortunately, that gets affected in your schools. Now, you can you get a great education in Shaker? Oh my gosh. They have an international baccalaureate program, which most schools do not. They have a wide range of AP courses. They offer more languages. They offer, uh, let's see, French. Where did I write it down? Spanish, German. So usually it's just French and Spanish. That's what that's most districts. That's all they offer. But they offer German, Latin, Greek, Mandarin. The amount of course offerings they offer is just through the chart. The special programs they have. Um, I was just when I was doing my research for this video. There was um, just a couple years ago. It was on the news. Um, um, it was a black high school student. And she's an AP student, and she was actually really upset. And she went to the school board meeting. She's like, "I don't understand why are there aren't more people like me in AP classes, and how do we make AP classes more more accessible for every race?" So they are still dealing with the whole diversity issue and and making the schools better, but the schools are actually excellent, you know, despite that C rating. Um, but if you are only interested in schools that have an A rating, then go over to Beechwood because they have it an A rating. But they also have their own issues. But we're not talking about Beechwood today. We're talking about Shaker Heights. Okay, if you don't want a lot of government involved in your town, Shaker might not be a good fit for you. Um, they have a lot of government spending, which some, some of these websites I was looking at give that as a pro. Um, government is very involved. When you go to sell a home or buy a home, Shaker Heights has a point of sale inspection and pretty much any suburb in the Cleveland area that ends in a Heights has a point, we call them a POS inspection. And you cannot transfer a property until all of those POS violations are fixed or assumed by the home buyer, which that's a whole different thing and it is a pain in the neck. Um, the particular property that my Florida couple are purchasing um, a, we couldn't see it because it was a multifamily. It's a rental property. We couldn't even see it until we had an accepted offer, um, which we did. We went through the inspection, all that's going through. But one of the reasons they were like jumped on it is because the sellers are making sure that it's going to be POS violation free by the time the title transfers. So, um, they come out and, hey, the driveway is bad, the windows are bad, your roof is bad, the electrical is bad. That has to be fixed. Um, and that's something you really don't have in any other suburb. So if you're not interested and if you're looking to invest in the Shaker Heights area, the one thing you really need to keep in mind is those POS violations. So the government is really involved in that. Um, so let's also talk about some other regulations they have. You can't park on the street between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. anywhere in Shaker Heights. And um, when I lived in North Olmstead, that was the same way. And normally it wasn't a problem because the streets were long. It's not like Lakewood where you have a ton of doubles and there's just nowhere to park. Like where my kids live, you're lucky to find a place to park. I mean, it's ridiculous. You have to park around the corner. It's unbelievable. Uh, but in North Olmstead, but we have, you know, if my kids had friends over, we had to make sure if they were sleeping, spending the night once they were in high school and driving, like, oh my gosh, get your, or we're having a party, get your car off the, cause they'll ticket you. So, um, keep that in mind. You cannot park your, if you, you know, you got a big family, everybody's driving, you better have a spot for them in the driveway. Cause there are no, no parking in the streets, 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. Also, the government's pretty involved with making sure your grass is cut your snow, your the snow is shoveled in your driveway and your sidewalk. So they're really, but you know what? That's what keeps that city looking beautiful. Okay, so that was actually five and six, government and parking regs. So those are two up, two different things. So now we're on to um, seven. And since parking kind of goes with transportation, uh, let's talk about some traffic. Uh, Shaker Heights is pretty populated. 27, over 27,000 people live in Shaker. And there can be some traffic situations. Um, there's a lot of one-way streets. Um, during the day, you are allowed parking. And the streets go, it's not like parallel and 
you know, right curves. You have streets that go diagonal. I mean, when we were driving around the other day, my husband's like, okay, we're at a stop sign. We're like, do I go this way? Do I go this way or this way? Um, so, but once you live there, you, you know, the street is just a, you know, a learning curve. Um, but a way around that is the RTA system, which is our public transportation, which stands for rapid transit authority. Um, and part of the RTA system is not only the buses, but our rail system, which we call the rapid. I don't know why we just call it the rapid and Shaker, I think is the only city that has direct lines. There's a blue line and a green line. I think one goes Shaker, Shake through Shaker Square, and the other one goes to Van Aken. Um, and it'll take you right downtown in 20 minutes. In fact, that Van Aken house, that 495, um, right across the street was the where you just walk across the street and there's a shelter for the RTA and you just wait for the train to come and it'll take you right downtown. I'm like, how awesome is that? So cool. So while there can be traffic. Um, the public transportation is absolutely amazing and you know, and it goes and they've really made some great strides like you go through downtown Cleveland like it goes right through the center of downtown Cleveland, but it only goes east. It does not go west, which is kind of a bummer for us west siders. But if you're in Shaker, that could be a pro or a con. To me, it's a pro. Okay, so we talked about that. We're on to number eight now. We're talking about crime. So I have a map up here. Green is good. Red is bad, obviously. Um, and this particular website, crimegrade.com, gives Shaker Heights a C. So, um, let's talk about it. So the outskirts you can see are all red. And like I said before, you're going through some not so nice neighborhoods to get to Shaker, but you see a lot of really dark green areas. Those are really crime free. I mean, you're talking, you should see, I mean, this one house, I think it was Cleveland Heights, but right across the street was Shaker, $1.4 million. It was used for whoever the current president of Case Western Reserve was. I mean, unbelievable. Um, so I hate to say it, but when you have lower income areas, there's more crime. Um, but nothing is red. The lowest you get is orange. So see, you know, you just got to watch your, and anywhere, like North Olmstead, there's a mall there. Strongsville has a mall. You know, Beachwood has a mall. There's going to be crime when you have shopping. It just is what it is. It's usually theft. So that's what it is. Keep your eye out. Be safe. Lock your doors. You know, but when you're in these neighborhoods, you feel so safe. Everybody's walking around. I mean, you, you see the videos. It was a crummy day. I mean, it was warm, but it was cloudy. It wasn't drizzling, but it was just ugly. But people are out on their bikes. They're walking their dogs. Um... You know, and let's talk about this. While I'm talking about walking around, if you don't like parks, then stay away from Shaker. There are so many parks, like amazing parks. And um, the One Street South Park, where all these beautiful mansions are, across the street is Shaker Lakes. You have nothing but woods across the street from you with running paths. Um, here's a video of the Nature Center, Shaker Nature Center. I've never been to it before. Now, Monday was the holiday. It was January 2nd. So nobody had school. Nobody had work. So people were walking just to get outside. This place was all these um, wooded paths. It was beautiful right in the middle of the city. So Shaker has a lot of recreation, like parks, ice skating rinks, um, swimming pools, you name it. Um, in fact, I am going to show this one house. This is on um, Southington. It's for sale. $739,000. Beautiful. But the taxes, oh my gosh, unbelievable. But across the street, you have, there's a school, Boulevard Elementary. Now that's rated an A. Wonderful school. So you have access. I mean, kids were out there with their dads playing soccer. And then right across the street, it looked like a pond. Of course, it was warm. So I'm like, is it a fish? Can you, not fish, but is it a skating, a little skating area? Is it just a pond? I'm not sure what it was, but... You have this whole area right in front of you and just the walkability. My daughter's obsessed because she's walking these dogs around the neighborhood. And she's like, oh my God, you, you go one street. Like not that these houses aren't absolutely beautiful. You go one street over and they're like mansions. Unbelievable. So I don't know. Parks are a plus to me. I love them. Okay. The last thing, if you don't want to be part of a community, you want to be left alone, Shaker's not for you. You're going to have neighbors. I mean, that's the thing. If you need a bunch of land, keep going east or go way out west. Shaker's not going to be for you. The community, they call it the shaker life. Get out here and live the shaker life. 
there's something like people say, oh, I live in Shaker. You're like, oh, I get it. There's something about a person from Shaker. You just know they're going to be, I mean, what if the stereotype for Shaker, you know, college professors, totally liberal, um, you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, oh, you're a politician, oh, you're a, you know, free thinker, oh, you're an artist, you know, oh, you're an author. You know, that's kind of what you think of when you think of, of Shaker. So if you're into that old architecture, I'm obsessed with those old houses. I absolutely love them. The taxes, I don't know. I mean, unfortunately, what I can afford, I mean, the house I could, I could sell my house for probably $150,000 more than what I would be able to afford out there in Shaker, just to take into account of the property taxes. So you have to keep that in mind. But hey, if you can get over that and find yourself a beautiful home, I think you'd be so happy. It's just such a great community. It's, ugh, I love it. So this was a kind of a long video. If you stuck to the end, thank you. If you're looking to move to the Cleveland area, Give me a call, send me a text, send me an email. I love to help. And if you're looking to move to Shaker Heights, I'll, I love going out there um, or anywhere else in the Cleveland area. I thank you for watching and I will see you next week.